Carousel, Rogers and Hammerstein. Even though they often tackled important issues like racism in South Pacific, I always found the music of Rogers and Hammerstein to be the epitome of Smoltz. I must be the only fan of musical theatre have never sat through the whole of Sound of Music. It was when I fell in love with the Bowie side man, Mick Ronson's version of Slaughter on 10th Avenue, that I opened myself up to the music of Richard Rogers, especially after seeing the Gene Kelly ballet of the same piece. I still balk at a lot of the scattergun rhyming of Oscar Hammerstein. When I hear Oh What a Beautiful Morning from Oklahoma, I can't help but picture an incongruous elephant in the cornfield by which the farmer measures the height of his crop. One afternoon when I was not at school, sick or between exams or holiday or something, I came across a very strange dark musical film on the TV. I was fascinated that it starred the mother in the Partridge family as the young female lead. I watched as a thoroughly bad sort, a fairground barker by trade, won the heart of the young woman, both of them singing the fantastic melody, If I Loved You. The talent of Richard Rogers was that he always knew the perfect tune for any series of words. And once you heard that tune, you will never imagine those words could be set to a different tune. The girl tells the man he is going to be a father, so he sings another gorgeous song, My Boy Bill, which is a celebration of conventional gender stereotypes. He sings how he does not want his son to be a sissy, and if the boy turned out to be a girl, how he would kill if he had to to get money for her. And that isn't even the most problematic part of the musical. Then he dies in a botched robbery attempt in breathtaking scenery during a clam bake as June is busting out all over, a veritable fishing tackle bucket of earworms. They sing June is busting out all over. It seems the convention for such things was to sing busting. G's are dropped all over the place in the script. They probably thought it was folksy. The elaborate dance sequence must have contained a sailor's hornpike. There was always a sailor's hornpike, even when there were no sailors. Then we see the dead man talking to the star man way up in the sky. He asks to see how his girl is doing. He is shown a ballet dance to a mournful version of the carousel theme. He sees his daughter, the daughter of a dead father, a bad man, being ostracised. A scene similar to the equally moving one in Pink Floyd's film of The Wall. He is allowed to talk to his daughter, but the conversation leads to him hitting her. The girl tells the mother what had happened, and the mother asked if it hurt, because sometimes you can be hit and it does not hurt. She knows who the daughter had spoken to and recognised the beating, and that is the problematic bit for today's audience. When I was a London minicab driver, the company I worked for had a contract to pick up staff from the National Theatre. One night after a charity gala performance of Carousel, I was sitting in the stage door area playing games with the faces of the actors and celebs, all waiting for lifts. The conversation seemed to be stuck on who had cried at the graduation scene. Which tough grown man had broke down like a jilted schoolgirl? In the graduation scene, the ghost of the man is standing next to his daughter as they all sing the graduation song. And the graduation song is, You'll Never Walk Alone. And the answer was, Everyone cried. They always do. Carousel, Rogers and Hammerstein.